Hello everyone and welcome back to Genie Crafts. In today's video, we are going to see how to prepare your board for making the string art. I've been getting a lot of questions on this, so I decided to make a video. And in the same video, we are also going to see how to create this simple and easy looking string art design. So guys, let's get started. So the first thing that you will need is a board. You can use an MDF board or a wooden board. Just ensure that the thickness of the board is at least one centimeter. Otherwise you won't have enough depth to stick your nails inside the board and the nails might come out. So use a thick board. Once you have the board, the next step is to find the center of the board. And for that, what I use is that I put the board on a piece of scrap paper or a paper that I'm not going to use for any craft. I put the board on top of it and then with the help of pencil, I simply trace a circle around the board and the circle is equal in size as per the size of the board. Now I will use this circle to actually find the center of the board. Normally when you buy the board, the board does not come with a center marked on top of it. And that's one of the major issues that you need to find the center of the board so that you can align your nails properly. So with the help of this method, I can find the center of the board. There are other mathematical and geometrical methods also to find the center of the board, but I find this is straightforward. But let me tell you, this is not the only way to do it. There are other ways to do it also. Once you have traced the circle, the next step is to cut the circle. You can use a scissor, you can use a paper cutting knife to uh, cut this circle so that you can start with finding the center. All right, so here is the circle that I have cut out on the paper and this will be of the same size as the face of the board on which I have basically traced the circle. Now to find the center, fold this circle that you have cut into exact half. Ensure that you are matching the edges of the circle properly uh, for the semi circle that you are forming. And once you have uh, done this folding, then you fold this semi circle into quarter circle by folding it again in half. And the center fold point that you get is the center of the circle simply. So a easy and quick way to find the center of the circle. But we have found this center on a piece of a scrap paper and on the actual background that we are going to put on the board, we don't want any folds. So what we are going to do is we are going to find the radius of the circle with the help of the center. And for that, I utilize a large compass. Uh, normally the small geometrical compass that you get in the stationery shop are not up for this task because the size of the boards are huge and so for this I utilize this large metallic compass which I got from my local art and craft store. You can also probably find it on online also but so far I have not uh, searched for it online but maybe you can search and you can find it. So put the pencil in the compass and with the help of the center that you have found on the scrap paper simply extend your compass till it reaches the circumference of the circle now this will give you the radius of the circle or the radius of your board also also the point uh, that we have just put at the center of this scrap paper we are going to utilize it to mark the center later on so now i will take my actual background paper and simply note the uh, you know radius just for my uh, future reference so the radius comes somewhere around 17 centimeter i guess and uh, with the help of this radius i'm going to create the circle on the actual background paper that i'm going to utilize for my string art okay so here is the background paper that i have cut in an almost perfect circle and now the next step is to mark the points where i'm going to hammer in the nails so once again mark the center clearly with the pencil so that you do not uh, miss it later on obviously there will already be an indentation from the compass when you draw this circle so you can easily find the center on this paper now for marking the nails what i do is that i mark the nails certain degrees apart rather than centimeter apart the reason i do it is because this is a circle on a circle the edge of the circle is actually curved so you cannot actually measure it with the help of a scale and you know put your nails a certain centimeter apart what will happen are two problems if we do the centimeter apart method one is that you will never be sure how many nails to put in it's quite possible that you have put 99 nails exact same distance from each other but the hundred nail 
you are not able to accommodate at the same distance that's the problem number one that you are going to face and the problem number two that you are going to face is uh, that uh, the nails will not be in a exact circular uh, you know circumference because uh, you are using centimeter apart so for this what we do is that with the help of the circular protractor uh, I decide on a number of nails that I can evenly divide the degrees in for example there are 360 degrees uh, in a circle so if I take 180 nails on my board then in that case I can place these nails two degrees apart so on the paper I put markings every two degrees similarly if I wanted to put only 120 nails in that case I need to separate the nails by three degrees apart so i'll put the marking at three degrees similarly you can put 90 nails uh, similarly you can put 36 nails 72 nails etc the amount of nails that you are going to put on the board are a function of two factors first is how big your board is the smaller the board the lesser number of nails you can accommodate in a circular fashion the larger the board the more number of nails you can accommodate if you have an extremely large board you can even accommodate 720 nails that is half degree apart even that is possible what you need to take care of is at the end once you have placed all the markings uh, you have to ensure that there is sufficient gap between the nails for you to be easily able to hammer in the nails one and second for you to be easily able to loop in the threads around the nails once you start making your string art so these two factors are very important so what happened uh, in this video was that initially i had used 180 nails that is i had put the markings two degrees apart but later on when i started to hammer in the nails what happened was that the nails were too close to each other so i had to scrap this particular paper i had to take another background paper and then uh, you know uh, put the markings at three degrees apart so that i can easily hammer in the nails so you learn all this by trial and error it's okay if you do not get it right the first time you will get it right the next time so slowly and slowly you get an idea depending upon the size of the board that you know how many degrees separation you need to go give had this been a square board uh, or the nails were arranged in a linear fashion in a straight line then in that case you can definitely uh, put the nails centimeter apart uh, you don't need to put the nails degrees apart so this degree apart method is only when you are putting the nails in a curve or in a circular fashion once you are done with putting the degree separation marking next step is to draw the actual circle on which we are going to hammer in the nails now as you can see that the size of the paper is equivalent to the size of the board obviously you cannot hammer in the nails on exactly the edge of the board so what you need to do is you need to draw a circle which is slightly inwards or inside from the edge of the uh, edge of the board uh, this is required because if you hammer in the nail too close to the edge of the board then in that case the nails might split the board and uh, it might ruin your board also so keep a distance of at least one centimeter from the edge of the board and draw a circle now this is the circle where we are going to actually hammer in the nails And now it's time for the next step in the preparation of your board that is to put the actual markings where you are going to hammer in the nails and we will be doing that on the circle that we had just drawn now take a scale and align your scale with the center that you have marked on your paper and the degree markings that you have just marked align your scale with these two points and wherever your scale is intersecting on the circle you just put a point there and that's where you are going to hammer in your nail also as you can see that initially i was using a pencil to put the marks but now i'm using a metallic uh, pencil basically i am uh, creating a small hole uh, at, at every place where i need to hammer in the nails the reason i'm doing this is because on this side of the paper there is a lot of pencil markings and indentations and whatnot and i don't want them visible uh, when i actually put this paper on my board so what i'll do is that i'll flip this side and the other side will be on top of the board and this side will be uh, underside uh, on the board 
so that's why i'm creating these uh, markings so that even when i flip the paper i can exactly know where i need to hammer in the nails and i'm going to follow this process for all the 180 points that i have already uh, put for the degree markings and i'm going to mark the position of the nails on the circle and here we are done with marking all the points for the nails and now we can paste this paper on top of the board for us to actually hammer in the nails so for attaching the paper to the board i'm simply going to use a double sided tape uh, rather than glue or anything else so that even if i need to remove it i can easily remove it i will clearly mark the center and then i'm going to put the double sided tape on top of this paper or on the board and paste it together when you're putting your double sided tape uh, ensure one thing that uh, you are ca you are taping in the edges properly and you're also putting uh, some pieces of tape at the center but at the same time also ensure that the tape is not covering any of the nail markings that you have already put otherwise it might create problem later on second thing when you are aligning your uh, board or you know pasting the paper uh, onto the board ensure that the paper is properly aligned otherwise your entire design will be slightly off center and we don't want that so before you completely paste your paper ensure that it is properly aligned with the surface of the board and with that we are now ready for the last step that is hammering in the nails on the markers that we have already put on the paper now for the purpose of nails the kind of nails that i utilized are galvanized nails these are plated nails of almost uh, 7 mm uh, you know width you can utilize uh, any kind of nails just ensure that they are not occupying too much space on your nail marking and you have enough space left uh, you know for looping in the thread also uh, ensure that the nails that you are utilizing do not have any uh, any sharp edges because when we do the string art there is enough tension in the string and if the edges of the nails are sharp your string is going to break which we do not want so use nails with a smooth surface the process of hammering is very straightforward uh, you can use any hammer that you are comfortable with to uh, hammer in the nails into the board uh, when you are hammering in the nails just take care of few things uh, the nails are perpendicular to the board they are not leaning inwards into the board or not leaning outwards radially also they are not leaning towards the side just in case uh, some nails are leaning slightly here and there it's okay also it's okay if the nails are leaning sideways left and right but it's not okay if the nails are leaning inwards or outwards radially uh, reason being uh, because if the nails are uh, leaning inwards or outwards radially what is going to happen is that uh, over a period of time after you have made your string art because of the tension of the string uh, these nails might starts to get loose but if they are leaning sideways that problem does not arise uh, in fact you should try that your nails are perpendicular and not leaning in any direction at all that's the best way to hammer in the nails it might take some practice so before you start hammering in the nails on the board you can try to hammer it at some spare piece of wood or uh, or mdf board and practice before you actually hammer in the nails uh, there are artists who i have seen that they use a certain kind of uh, wooden piece to align the nails properly I have not been able to uh, get that so far or make it on my own so once I am able to do that I will show the use of that also but for now you have to use your judgments to ensure that all the nails are exactly at same height after you have hammered them in and it's not that difficult to do for the first nail that you hammer in you can choose the height that is uh, you want for the nail after that once you start hammering in the nails uh, hammering the next nail what will happen is that after few hits your hammer is going to hit both the nails and the sound that your hammer is going to make will change and that's an indication that you have reached the desired height for the next nail also so these are the different techniques that you can use and 
it's up to you how you maintain the height it's completely up to your discretion but you have to ensure that all the nails are at approximately the same height all the nails are perpendicular to the board and not leaning inwards and outwards once you're done with the nails now we come to the last step that is putting numbers on the nails if you are planning it for a giveaway item or gifting it to someone you might utilize a pencil to put in the number so that after you are done with your string art you can uh, use an eraser to get rid of the numbers but since i'm going to use this board for quite a few pieces so i'm putting numbers with the help of a pen so you can put the numbers in any direction you want clockwise or anti-clockwise as long as you are not making a portrait if you are making a portrait then in that case the numbering has to be done in clockwise direction so you can start your numbering from any nail you want but once you have chosen the starting nail you have to number it in clockwise direction if you are making a string portrait but otherwise any direction is fine and with that our board is now finally ready for doing the string art I prepared this board specifically for geometrical art since the size of the board is small for portrait. So now we'll move on to the geometrical art that I promised at the beginning of the video. And for that, I'm going to utilize this uh, blue green shade for of you know nylon thread. And we are also going to utilize another uh, color pink for this design. So in this particular design, I'm not going to utilize all the nails. I'm only going to utilize nails at every 10 intervals. So I'm going to utilize the nails marked 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 110 and 120. And the design is uh, very straightforward for this particular string art. Start by tying off the thread at the uh, starting nail. For this, I have chosen nail number 120, 120 as the starting point. Now, all you need to do is to ensure that nail number 120 is connected with all the other nails that I have chosen. That is 110, 190, 80, uh, you know, uh, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. Then uh, I will move to uh, the second nail, that is the nail number 10. So basically, all these nails that I have selected have to be connected with each other. That's the purpose of the design. And this is called something, this is something called as sacred lotus design. I don't know the exact name, but this is quite popular on YouTube. A lot of people make this also. And this is very simple to make, as you can see on the screen also, that this design is very straightforward. All you need to do is to ensure that all these selected nails are connected with each other. That's all. Once we are done with the uh, blue thread, then we will take another color and another set of 10 nails that is nail number 5, 15, 25, 35, 45 and so on and create the exact same design with the help of a pink thread also. And we are done with the blue thread and now we will uh, do the same thing with the pink nylon thread also. The thread that I am utilizing for this design is of weight 40. So this is slightly thicker nylon thread and nylon threads are very slippery so you have to be very careful while handling it otherwise your design might unravel every now and then. So here we are with the final output of the design. It looks much beautiful uh, in reality than on video. On video, uh, the design is slightly distorted because of all the shadows that are formed by the thread. But otherwise, this design is looking really nice. So I hope that you guys found this video useful on how to prepare your board for the string art and string portraits. And I've been able to answer all the questions that you have been asking me on the different aspects of the preparation of the board if you guys found this video useful please do not forget to hit the like button and share this video with your friends also do subscribe to my channel for regular videos on art and crafts and i will see you guys very soon in my next video till then stay safe take care and bye bye